What's up guys and welcome to my next challenge run. For this one, I'm asking the question, can I beat Cyberpunk with only my fists? As usual with my challenge runs, I have a set of rules for myself. First off, I am not allowed to do any sort of stealth kill, takedown, or anything like that, so I have to go into every combat loud and aggressive. Also, whenever the game presents to me a situation where I either can avoid combat or choose to do it, like with Pan Am going after Nash, I'm always going to choose to go into the combat section. Next, I'm restricting a couple pieces of cyberware. First off, I'm not going to be using the invisibility, I'm not going to be using a berserk or a sandy, and I'm also not allowing myself to use the gorilla arms for the extra melee damage. I'm purely going off of bare fists and what they can do with the perks. One rule that I don't really implement right away because I just didn't really think about it at the time, but after chatting with you guys and doing a live stream, I ended up deciding to go with no armor for the run. So for the first part of the run, I am wearing like armor, but it's just random clothing I picked up. It's not really a lot. However, later on in the run, I take off all the armor and go into all the remaining ending missions with zero armor. Also, if you've seen enough of these challenge runs, you know that driving segments are basically glorified cutscenes, so I am just going to be taking those on like normal. And the last thing, you guys have been asking for it, I'm going to be doing the secret ending for this challenge run, and oh my gosh, that was insane. If you are willing to give this video a like, throw a comment down below, and or subscribe, I would really appreciate it. I'm still a small YouTuber, and I love making this content. Anyways, that's enough of an intro, let's get into the video. Starting up a new game, as usual, I put it on the hardest difficulty and decided to go for the Nomad intro. I decided to take inspiration from my favorite Naruto villain, cause the world shall know pain, just as I'm about to. And then I put my starting attributes into body, reflexes, and technical ability. Jumping into the game, since this entire section is kind of just a glorified cutscene, I think we'll just kind of gloss over it. Basically, I just do the Nomad intro as usual and get into the first mission. I equip my fists and we run up to save Sandra Dorset. As I stated in my rules, I'm not going to be using stealth, so I go in swinging. Definitely don't want to slug at your back. Boy, not me. Hang on! Reloaded! Heal, heal, V, V! Ah! Don't see any movement on the sensors. Oh, Looks Jackie like got, got him. him. Clear to right. go. With all the guys down, we save Sandra Dorset and make it to the first driving segment. And as I stated before, we're just going to kind of gloss over these because obviously I can't punch people from where I'm at, nor can I even get rid of the gun in my hands. Waking up the next morning, I go meet up with Jackie and proceed to not say anything and watch him eat for way too long and get some delicious mouth noises from him. We head over to Vix, I get my zoomy eyes, I finally go meet up with Dex and talk about the mission the heist and get released into the open world. After scrolling through the perk trees and getting an idea of what I'm going to be doing, I decide to start going to Assault and Progresses and do my usual grind to get some levels and some money. And honestly, this was tough. There was a lot of missions that I would run into where there was so many guys that it was really difficult to not get shot and not get taken down immediately. Mind you, while grinding for levels, I start to get used to the combat of fighting with just my fists and find that heavy punches are the way to go. However, they consume a lot of stamina and make it very tricky. Because once you're out of stamina, it's very difficult to move and you get shot a lot usually means you're dead. In this instance, I start using the consumables to actually help offset the horrible stamina regen and health issue. And it ends up helping quite a lot, actually. After getting to the cusp of about level 5 and getting about $25,000, I decide to make my way into the All Foods mission. Now again, because I'm not avoiding combat, after having a nice conversation with them, I just take down Royce and start the combat segment. <laughs> Where'd this gun come from? Yeah. 
This whole combat segment, I basically just looked for anyone that was alone and would sprint at them and stun lock them with my heavy punches. To my surprise, I make it through all foods without a single death and proceed to make my way to Lizzie's bar. I go meet up with Evelyn, she shows me the sauce, and we find where they're holding Keanu Reeves. Afterwards, I make my way to the afterlife and we begin the mission, the heist. We make it to Compeki Plaza. I put away a gun that literally doesn't exist in my inventory. I say a quick hello to Hideo Kojima and make our way up to our suite. Do some spy stuff with the flathead, make our way to the penthouse, grab Keanu Reeves, we hide in the TV and watch Yorinobu aggressively stomp around. While trying to escape, we jump off the roof of the penthouse and start the combat segment. I don't like it. And to my surprise, most of this combat goes pretty simple. Except for there is this one room that I do run into where there's just no cover and it's really difficult. So I die here quite a few times. Jeez. I run into a glitch I think is new. I've literally never seen it before. The guy looks like he's still holding his gun even though he's knocked out on the ground. It's really interesting. I finally take down the big guy, take the key card, and we make our way down to the final fight area. I ping everybody in the room so I can hide around corners correctly and proceed to 1v1 a lot of these dudes until they're pretty much all gone. The giant mech drops down and I figure, you know what? This is a challenge run for a reason, right? All right, well, let's see if we can do this, Jackie. What? This is not real. Oh no, get up, get up. <laughs> uh, we did good, Jackie. Their turrets being weak spots is really an issue, I feel like. We get to the driving segment, I play it out like normal, and we finally say our goodbyes to Jackie. I don't know, insert some Naruto pain quote here. Dex decides to kill me, and we get into the Johnny flashback. Trying to stay in theme of this run as much as possible, I do end up pushing my way through this entire mission with just fists. Mind you, Johnny's stamina is trash, so it is actually really difficult because he just isn't good at this. But with a lot of patience, I push my way through and finally make it through this mission. Waking back up in our own body, Takemura saves us from Dex, and we hop into yet another driving segment where I just have to play it out as normal. After saving our life, Victor tells us how messed up we are, and we find that Johnny Silverhand's in our head. Waking up the next morning, I head to go meet up with Takemura to get that quest rolling, and then immediately head to Lizzie's bar to meet up with Judy to get that ball rolling. I make my way up to Clouds and proceed to just punch my way up to Woodman and knock him out and find where Evelyn was taken to. I go meet up with Fingers and get really close to punching him, but remember he has some cyberware that I might want in the future. We do some investigative stuff and eventually make our way to this Electric Corp power plant. And as I've done in the past, I punch my way through these guys. I do play this out as smart and cautious as possible, but die a couple times trying to make my way through this mission. Eventually, we make it to where Evelyn is and save her. After digging through some of the brain dances that she recorded, I end up getting what I need to pursue further missions. I make my way to the afterlife to pay Rogue for the information on Anders and run into an old friend. Hey Waylon, it's good to see you. It's been a, it's been a playthrough. I get the information on Anders and head off to meet up with Pan Am. Now again in my fascination with cars just disappearing here, I once again test it out and yes my car disappears. Okay. 
And I think it's because Pan Am has to drive this way, so they don't want a car in the way of where she's going to be driving. So I just parked the car down the road a little bit. We have a quick conversation, I and I hop in her car. Please. <laughs> How the hell did you land in this mess? Just I like silent. Guy. Just Leave dead silent. Goes flying. After grabbing some resources from the Nomad camp, we set up for a surprise attack on the Raff and Shiv. Using this giant arcade space, I'm able to kind of lure guys in and take them out one at a time. And eventually grab Pan Am's car. And like I said at the intro, anytime I can avoid combat, I'm not going to. So we end up going for revenge with Pan Am. And as usual, with all my challenge runs, whenever I get to this area, it's just a lot. After dying a couple times, I find the best solution is to immediately run to the back and get the guys that are up on the catwalks because they're usually kind of alone and they're using snipers so they don't shoot a lot. So they're pretty easy to take down. To my surprise, Pan Am goes ham and pretty much cleans up everybody for me. Dang, Pan Am, why are you so good all of a sudden? You're just, you took out all of these guys? Why couldn't you do that last run? What? All right. Well, I guess that makes my job easy. I think in my delusion, I decided to do my best interpretation of Boz. Pan Am, how's Nash? Pan Am, how's Nash? And since I've been eating a lot of food and drinking a lot of drinks, I all of a sudden remember that there's a food type in this game. <gasps> Hello, Noah. Burrito. Hey. Or friends back there. Sold. What? Take a wild guess. Is everything good with you? Pan Am says she has an idea, but wants to sleep on it and come back to it the next day. Waking up the next morning, I find another burrito machine. <gasps> More burritos. I have so many burritos now. All I need is burritos. One of the issues I weirdly run into with these runs is always just trying to get Takemura to give me the call so I can pursue the missions with him. So I do a couple assault in progresses because for some reason, whenever I start some of those, sometimes it triggers a phone call with him, but nothing ends up happening. So I just make my way back to meet up with Pan Am and continue the missions with her. She tells me her plan to get Anders. We drive into a power plant and overload the entire system, placing a bomb and setting it off triggering an EMP to knock down the AV. For extra measure, Pan Am decides to shoot a rocket to make sure it goes down. And I still have the weird glitch where my Pan Am, <laughs> where my Pan Am, did I just say Pan? Anyways. And I still have that weird glitch where the AV kind of does a little spin thing. I don't know what it is. We get through this mini driving segment, do a quick scan of the crash site, and because Pan Am won't come and help until the missile launcher is down, I immediately run to go shut it down. While running away, I put in two punches on the flying robot and find that almost half its health is gone. And I realize how easy these are gonna be to take down. <laughs> Punch the crap out of some robots, let's go. With Mitch saved, Pan Am decides to straddle the air. Ooh, that's new. You're not in the ground this time. Whoa. Nice. Pan Am and I follow the tire tracks and make our way to where Anders is being held. And I get spotted by the sniper immediately and decide to just kind of go for it. Okay. All right, whatever. Oh, I didn't know we could climb these. Fascinating. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just punched those boxes. That's kind of sick, actually. Didn't even mean to use the environment, but I did. Pin him. You still have your well, sniper out, by the way. <laughs> Anders and I have a nice conversation, and I finish the mission. Knowing that my next couple missions are going to be decently tough just because of the sheer amount of enemies and or because it's a boss fight, I decide to run around just a little bit trying to get Takemura to give me a call. And wouldn't you know it, he finally calls me up and I go meet up with him and have a chat with some people. 
At this point, I'm just a level 14 and want to get a little higher level and some better equipment and such before I go into the final couple missions that are really going to be the harder stuff. I decide to do a live stream where I go from level 14 to level 20, where I just grind out the levels doing assault and progresses and make a decent chunk of change. I'll put the live stream in the description if you want to check it out. While doing my live stream is when I had the conversation with you guys where I decided to go with zero armor for the entire run, even clothing. While doing that live stream, I do get the call from Takemura to do the mission, Gimme Danger. As usual, trying not to avoid combat, I rush my way in through the back and start punching my way through the enemies. Yo, that was sick. Dude, I'd be kind of clapping dudes. With the last opponent being the giant mech, and once again, to my surprise, they go down actually really easily with just a couple punches to their guns. Let's go buddy, let's go. Too easy, dude. And I don't know when it happened or how or what, but the, I think the mech pushed this van into this wall. So of course I have to investigate. Now what if I get it? Hold up, wait, is this wall just like non-existent? With my curiosity satisfied, I decide to move into the mission where I have to go meet up with Placide. As usual, jumping into the mission, I just start to throw hands. Sorry, Placide. Not what I'm here to do. You don't understand, do you? Come at me. Come at me, huh? Take that counter, huh? Huh? And finally, I make it to the boss fight with Matilda. Get back here. Gosh, this fight. Yo, what the heck? What was that punch? Alright, she's hacking me now. Alright. Man, you're nasty. <laughs> oh, let's get that counters. Huh? Okay, I need to heal. I need to heal. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I can't see what you're doing. I'm just going to hit you. All right, cool. I run up and immediately punch the Netwatch agent because that feels in theme. Head back to the Voodoo Boys. We do a deep dive into Johnny's consciousness and start the next flashback where I once again use Johnny's fists, but his lack in stamina makes this an extreme pain. Wow. All right, cool. Thanks, dude. But since I have a lot of help with this mission, I tend to just stay back a little bit more than usual and just let them do a lot of the fighting for me. We get to the final boss guy, and to my absolute surprise, when you get too close to him, he puts away his gun and pulls out his fists, and it just felt so right in that moment. Well, come at me, bro. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Ah, wait. Hold up. <laughs> Honestly, was kind of excited to 1v1 him, but then all the buddies show up and just start wasting him. We finally make our way to alt, where we find she's dead, but was actually transformed into a digital version of herself and now exists in the dark web. We meet up with alt in the dark web as our current self. She says that she'll help us if we can make it to Makoshi. Since the last mission I need to do is to follow up with Takemura and go after the parade, I know that I just have to wait for Takemura to call me.
Oh, okay, I'm good. So I decide to run around and grab some cyberware just to make myself a little more set up. I mostly get things like a bio monitor that restores health if my health gets too low just to help me stay alive better. I also picked up a reflex tuner so whenever my health drops below 15% I get a little bit of slow time just gives me a little bit of time to kind of back off get some heals in and or maybe take down one of the guys who's being an issue for me. And finally I get the call from Takemura and we go do the mission play it safe. With what these guys put me through in my last challenge run I take them down with pleasure and finally make it to the Oda fight. Of course you're here. You know, I'm not doing bad damage. He's not doing an insane amount to me either. Okay, that's kind of a lot of damage. <laughs> Can you stop running? Yo, I can counter his his uh attack. <gasps> huge, huge. Huge info. Let's go, get the counters in. <laughs> Counter this. <laughs> oh, my gosh, so much damage. Come on, come on, get another swing in. <laughs> okay, okay. Health is low. Health is low. Heal up. Heal up. I need to heal. I need to heal. Give me a sec. Give me a sec, Oda. <laughs> wow. Fists are so much better than I expected. This is funny. Alright. I can't believe I can counter... Mantis Blades. Okay, <laughs> Talking more grabs Hanako. I make my way to meet up with him at the apartment. Arasaka shows up and I once again watch him T-pose on them. Just in case I want his help later on, I decide to hop up and save him and we both get out of there. With that mission done, I meet up with Hanako's proxy and we unlock the end of the game. However, a lot of you guys have been asking for it and you guys want me to do the secret ending of the game. So we're doing it with this one. After almost dying, Johnny saves my life and he asks if he can borrow my body to go meet up with Rogue. And because this is how I get to the secret ending, I let him do it. Now this cutscene section kind of shows what trashy of a person Johnny is. Since a lot of this cutscene has a lot of stuff that I just really don't want to show, we're just going to skip past it and get to when we're back in our body. Anyways, we get through all the cutscene stuff and we end up jumping into a mission with Rogue and go after Adam Smasher and Grayson. After beelining it straight to Grayson, everybody else just kind of dies and I punch him till he just kind of sits down all of a sudden. After having a nice chat with him, I end up getting Johnny's keys off his dead body and retrieve Johnny's Porsche from the shipping container. And if you're wondering, yes, I have a mod to make this Porsche look way cooler. I make it out to the oil field to have a chat with Johnny and do these specific prompts to make sure I get the secret ending to Unlocked. If you're wondering, this is the only conversation that matters, this is the only instance that matters in the game to get the secret ending unlocked, so if you make the right choices here, you can just do it. Now, most endings in the game kind of scale with your level, and I couldn't remember or not if this one also did, so I decided to immediately run for the ending. My thought process is, the lower level I am with the max amount of damage I can do because I have all the perks that help my fists, it means I'm doing the most damage I can do and it means they're going to have the least amount of health they can have. After going through all of the intro cutscenes and getting to the section where I have to sit in front of Johnny for five minutes, I jump into the secret ending. I say you grab the hottest iron you can find, stride in the tower's front door, and cut your own path down to the lower levels. I'll show you my hottest irons. That's dumb. That's a really bad joke. Let's mobilize. Alright. 
Time to party Weapons like it's 2023. Okay. Uh, shoot. Oh, they're all skull. See, this is the issue I'm running into, where they're all going to be max level. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I took one bullet there, and I'm already half health. Okay, this is bad. This is really bad. <laughs> After dying from literally one bullet, I know that there's no way I can beat this mission without being max level. So, I decided to do yet another live stream where I go from where I'm at right now, the mid-20s, all the way to level 50. Honestly, it was a super fun stream, and I really enjoy everybody who came out and hung out with me while I grinded these levels. After hitting level 50, a lot of you guys wanted me to do the Beat on the Brat missions, so I proceeded to go all the way and make myself the champion. If you want to see all those fights, I'll put a timestamp in the live stream if you just want to see me fight them all. Light spoiler, uh, <laughs> I kind of trivialized them. Before jumping into the last mission once again, I do another shopping spree and make sure to get all the cyberware I want for this mission. I end up picking up Second Heart, I get the Pain Editor from Fingers, and I get Heal on Kill, so every time I kill someone, I get a little boost of health. I also get the legendary version of the Reflex Tuner because I maxed reflexes for the movement speed, so... Every time my health drops too low, I get a nice slow time, which gives me time to just sort of reset. After slamming a burrito and having a Citrus Cola Classic, I hop into the end of the game. Seeing as how I died to one bullet last time, I'm interested to see how this will go. For having no armor, I'm surprised how many shots I can take, and I'm able to push these guys way harder than I thought. However, they have a lot more health than I anticipated them having, and are literally just like bullet sponges. If you don't know, this mission also only has one checkpoint in the entire ending mission. And if you don't get that checkpoint, it's just game over, roll credits. So if I don't beat it, I have to then sit with Johnny for five more minutes and jump back into it again and hope I get to that first checkpoint. Because if I make it there, then I can be a little bit more aggressive and I can keep reloading that save. Now this entire ending combat segment, if I put all the parts that actually succeeded together, it would be a little over a half hour. And I don't want to make you guys have to sit through that. However, if you guys do want to see what that would look like and the insanity that it is, I'm totally down to create a separate clip for you guys of me just doing that successful run where I cut to just the successful pieces. In order to get to this last checkpoint, I have to clear out about five waves of enemies and eventually get a key card off of one of the bodies to open up the elevator, which gives me the autosave. Now, the first about four waves or so were actually way more chill than I expected uh, because it was usually only like four guys and I was able to kind of kite them around using the back hallway and things like that. However, the last wave was, I would say, 10 to 15 people. It was hard to tell with everything moving around. At this point, there was too many people and I couldn't kite them around correctly, so it was extremely difficult. Mind you, these guys hit really hard. I even had one instance where one dude put a single burst into me, hit every shot, I immediately went down. Since I had second heart, I was able to get back up and then the front of the lobby, nobody seemed to uh, attack me or be aggressive towards me there, so I would run back there, sit, heal up, wait for cooldowns. However, this mission also has a timer built in with the Relic Malfunction, where my max health keeps getting reduced every about minute and a half. So, the more I wait for cooldowns, the lower my total max health will be, making this more and more difficult. So, I have to play aggressive. And in my first attempt, I end up dying completely and having to reset. However, on my second attempt, Pushing through these guys, I feel like it was a lot of luck and a lot of chance situations, but I was able to kind of single them out every so often and slowly whittle down this massive horde of people that is the final wave. With a lot of close calls, I finally get it and I'm able to get to that first checkpoint. Starting to think this plan wasn't batshit crazy after all. Same. <laughs> I definitely did not think this would be possible without armor. Uh, let's refresh everything. Uh, another burrito for good luck. Nuka-Cola Sakura. I like it. Of the two hours it took me to finally beat this end mission, an hour and a half of it was purely spent on this second half of the mission. There is just so many guys and so many rooms to go through. Once again, I do have a technical timer on top of me that if I don't do it fast enough, my max health will be very minimal for the Atom Smasher fight. 
There's even two separate occasions where you run into a full squad of robots, and because they don't really flinch when you hit them, they all are just full blast all the time. So trying to get them down fast enough to where they can't damage me anymore was crucial. And after about 15 attempts, I got lucky and made it through to the fight with Smasher. All right, Smasher. Alt! You here? What's with the door? Don't strain yourself now. doesn't know what to do. What the heck? What? What's happening? Am I like stun locking him? No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, please. No, no, no. They're weak, they're weak. Keep moving, keep moving. This, bro, this is it. You done, dude. You done. No more missiles. Just this puny little gun. Oh, you see that? Got a counter on you too, dude? Oh, you're so done. Oh, you're so done.
Johnny Silverhand sends his regards. I did it. Holy crap. I wasn't sure there for a second. Those rooms beforehand were so brutal. Oh my gosh. Just bare fists, baby. We saw this place in a dream. Hey, are you proud of me, Johnny? I still don't have Anders. You guys keep wanting me to do different endings, so I can't ask if Anders is proud of me anymore. There it is, guys. We did it. Uh, so, <laughs> that was crazy. I honestly, when I started that ending, didn't think it was possible. I was like, there's no way. Like, I have to wait for this five-minute conversation every time. And then I feel like I just got lucky and was able to make it down. And I just kept losing health, so I was like freaking out a little bit. Like, am I gonna have enough health for this fight? And that was actually a really good challenge. I'm really happy it's done though. A lot of times I like to reward the people who watch all the way to the end of my videos. So for the next challenge run, uh, I am going to be probably doing a live stream actually on the very next one. And I'm probably gonna do gun swapping every time I kill someone. So I have to pick up their gun and use it. Uh, so I'm probably gonna live stream that one because, uh, you know, it just would make it more interesting. However, the next one I'm going to do that's going to be like an edited, like pre-recorded one is going to be Dex's pistol using uh, shooting money, shooting my money away. But I'm going to add some catches to try to make it a lot more uh, taxing, I would say. So it should be interesting. Anyways, uh, this was a crazy one. I had a lot of fun doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.